switch automation platform is, you know, a, a software or operational analytics platform. And our data integration is one of our strengths and key differentiators. So we at the top, we've got these three methods of ingesting data into the switch platform. We have our network appliance that sits in on the building systems network and that harvests data from you know, all sorts of edge devices. Now that could be building management systems, it could be access control systems, it could be lighting control systems, sub metering systems, water metering systems, you name it, you know, as long as we can establish an integration path to that hardware, then we can communicate and harvest data out of those, you know, edge, you know, edge devices. Data streams is, is more about also other data that's across the organization, which might take the form of utility bills, work orders. And so we can actually do analysis and help our clients get a fast path to value of bringing in data streams through utilities and work order analysis. So from a utility standpoint, as an example, we could actually do energy benchmarks and baselines for their portfolio based on historical utility data. So then we can project through with you know, energy use index about how many kilowatt hours per square foot they might be consuming. And I'll identify outliers that are consuming, you know, more energy. So energy hog um, and calling that out. If we're doing it for work orders, we might be looking at assets um, that are continually being fixed uh, on a weekly basis, as an example, that might justify or substantiate an upgrade um, ahead of time. And then APIs. APIs are a, are a method that we're being communicating with from other systems. So an API is really software, just talking to software. So there's a lot of the internet of things at the moment um, has really gained a lot of traction in the last three to five years. So you can buy widgets from all sorts of companies like say indoor air quality sensors, people counting um, sensors that are posting to their own platform. So our team are able to then harvest data from those APIs and then pull that into this unified experience across you know, those three levels of, of integration. So we're harmonizing all of this data in one place, normalizing it so we can actually get data driven insights from you know, all of these disparate systems that we're, we're connecting to. Changing gears a little bit to then a, a, a connected building. This is now um, the DX Cube product. So this is us where we've installed a network appliance onto a building systems network. We're now giving the client a digital readiness score. So the idea of this is to give the operations team and our client um, some insight into what devices we've actually been able to discover. This is an interactive report here about, you know, digital readiness, but we're also scanning for the categories and subcategories and the manufacturers of the equipment that we're discovering on this network. So from an, an OT operational technology standpoint, we can actually do this digital representation of their building through those connected devices. We're also doing a general uh, network health, network performance um, of the building because we're able to uh, tell them which is like devices that are offline, devices that are responding slow. This affects data quality into our platform. It's bad data in, it's bad data out. So we can actually now highlight to our clients where we've got really good networks, devices that are offline, identify integration protocols. So this is a little bit of jargon, but the reality here is this is important for us to get data out of buildings. If these protocols don't exist, then we can't communicate to them. So this is really that grassroots, the start of, you know, getting um, digital or data insight um, from, from those buildings. So what I will do now is really talk about the dashboards that we can create for our end users um, that have, you know, meaningful impact. So, so this is coming up as like a, a high level building summaries dashboard. So we can actually see here how many floors are within temperature limits, how many floors are within, you know, CO2 air quality sort of limits. So this is a, a, a great example of how we can now start to convey messages throughout the organization and the stakeholders. So you can see there's a maximum, you know, CO2 that's in the red, you know, we're approaching 800 
um, the worst floor is level 35. So you can actually see here from that insight and, and us being able to pull data out of the building, we can actually empower the facilities teams with insight rather than trawling through. When you think about this at the portfolio scale, we can actually do these summaries across all the buildings in a normalized, unified way that the same information is. So one of the limitations today is that all the building management systems have very different user experiences based on the manufacturer. We're able to now normalize this and provide very consistent messaging across you know, multiple sites. So if that's 10, 20, 50 buildings. So really what we do is we build upon this from a visitor engagement, user engagement side of things. Another example of this is, is similar, but this just shows about those integrations where I started with the architecture. This shows um, different levels of integration through you know, other subsystems. So in this, in this example, we've got fire panel integration, we've got people counting, we've got a weather station, we've got the building management system as well as, um, I think I said elevators, sorry, elevators. So we can actually now know that there's 123 people in the building, 177 have come into the building. So these sorts of summary insights is really what gets, you know, our clients going, you know, these aha moments because all of these user interfaces are completely configurable by these little this little tile library that we're able to build and it's sort of a drag and drop methodology into the back end to then have that data here so with this as as much as it might look noisy but it's actually a really pretty powerful screen where all of those different integrations you will not get in a single standalone building management style um, of system um, Something else that we do within the platform is operationalizing the, what we call opportunities through the events feature of the platform. So events is really about getting together all of the faults that we might identify in the day-to-day -day operations of a building. So if we're identifying hot spaces, cold spaces, um, equipment that's poorly performing, we can actually categorize that and input this into essentially a light ticketing system. So as an example here, we've got a poor performing um, air handler unit in the building. And from here, we can actually foster conversations with the site teams. We can apply screenshots and snapshots of the interval data that we're capturing from those subsystems. So as an example here, you know, one of our engineers has highlighted and identified the issue, um, which is then all captured, you know, within this ticket essentially, and that ticket can have some cost opportunities applied to it. So these events really help us operationalize that. So again, setting us apart from a standard building management system, which is really just there to operate the, you know, air conditioning of a building. Um, this is actually identifying you know, pro and prioritizing, you know, opportunities to be fixed in the building in a proactive sense as well, rather than reactive, because typically the reactive method that's out there today is about the break fix. Something's broken, I need to go and fix it. We're about identifying where equipment performance has deteriorated over time, and we can capture that in these events. And then for our client at the sort of the facilities end, the facilities teams can work with these individually, but from the client's end, we can actually serve them up a portfolio wide events report. So they can understand how the switch program is going across their entire portfolio and facilities managers with this visualization and interactive report, they can understand where the opportunity costs lie, what buildings might need some capital expenditure, you know, approved, you know, or fast tracked uh, to really get them back because, you know, operating buildings more efficiently or the flow on effects for that are, you know, obviously energy savings, equipment life uh, and, and all sorts of things. So these, you know, these events and that operationalizing of the, the platform. So from, you know, data ingestion right through to fault detection analytics um, and then opportunities closing, we're truly like closing out the whole cycle um, of, you know, the, the life cycle or operation cycle um, of a building. So what I will show now, some other parts of the platform that we um, hang our hat on because, you know, from our team, we also do control in the platform. So this is also something that our clients, um, whether they're enterprise or retail clients actually, you know, quite 
again, from a consistency point of view, because we're agnostic to the underlying hardware that we're controlling, but this control user interface is really all about us being able to showcase um, uh, the ability that we can control and affect the environment. So if a client has hot space temperatures, cold space temperatures, and so on, we can adjust um, the temperatures to suit um, that environment. So, so we can see here, we can adjust temperature set points. This is our office here in Denver. So we've got pretty low CO2 at the moment, which is nice. Um, different, you know, temperature set points that we can play with there. So the control UI is one um, that again, resonates with some of our clients because they've got the ability to control all the different hardware from a very consistent user experience, you know, up down temperatures and so on. Um, you think about healthy, healthy workplace and, and getting going back to you know, the office. I mean, that's been a big driver for some of our clients where they're installing indoor air quality sensors now um, over and above their building management system. And so this is an example of a co-working space that we did in Sydney, where we integrated their room booking system, we integrated their building management system, we integrated some IoT CO2 sensors. And this was at the front you know, foyer reception area of the building where people could come in and immediately know um, whether rooms were, you know, pre-booked or whether they were safe to go into. Um, those were the sorts of things there. We also integrated with wireless access points from Cisco. So we could again, appreciate density of people, not so much people counting, but density of people in areas that were connected to the individual, you know, wireless access points. That gave this client a sense of, you know, how crowded were um, the, the, their environments, but also giving people this intuitive way and method to understand their facility through integration of those five disparate systems. This is again, a sort of a, a 3D floor plan um, of a building um, that we're doing in New York. And you can have like this high level visualization of what's going on uh, within the building, but then the ability to drill through into um, some more granular information. Again, with wireless access point integration, we can actually understand density of areas. We can filter tiles to show, you know, um, rooms and high CO2 levels. So there's an attraction here again, and we've got multiple systems integrated to, you know, spin up these visualizations.